Drivers at the French Grand Prix trying to win this on the final lap. The three wide again, Gio down the inside. Gio moves across, they're both in front of Milan and Pugge. Before you know it, we find ourselves here in the very final race of the competition. And then they see truck racing and they think, this is crazy, you know, these are five ton machines, 1200 horsepower brake. Oh, look at that switchback. Oh, he's been looked and it's ready to go out. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.
Good evening, everybody. Good evening, indeed. Welcome to Chaz Draycott Media, and welcome to the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge and Round 3 of Season 3. It's fantastic to be here at the Daytona International Speedway on the road course, of course, this evening. And it's going to be a wonderful third round of the championship that provides a lot of different challenges to our drivers in these very difficult-to-drive GT4 machines. My name is Chaz Draycott. And I'm delighted to be joined, as ever, by the wonderful Ed May. Ed, we've had two great rounds of the championship so far, some two-week breaks in between each of them, but now we have a straight run through to the end of the season, and what a great place to get that underway here at Daytona. Yes, thank you very much, Chaz. It is a wonderful venue, this Daytona, a circuit that we've been to as part of the Sim Racer Magazine family for more than a few times now. Every single season of the SRM GT4 Challenge has had a race here at Daytona, in addition as well to the Daytona Classic that we had yes. earlier on in the year. So it's a circuit that a lot of the drivers will be familiar with, and it's a track that I personally have a lot of good memories here. The track that I took my first ever race victory in Sim Racing Magazine fashion. It was a brilliant, brilliant track to drive, and I mean, some of the racing that we saw even last time out in season two, wasn't there like a photo finish at line between three drivers, if I can remember rightly? It was just yes. madness. From start to finish and i'm fairly certain we'll be seeing that yet again here tonight yeah definitely i think it was dan mccauley rob sharp and i think jacob money was the third car involved in that and it was very very close going the way of dan mccauley in the end the cheeky little sausage that he is we've actually got a good look here though at the team's championship and the driver's championship callum brandt at the top of the latter at the moment by 10 points after two race victories on the bounce lewis ward in second place 10 points behind him we we'll then look at that there's only one point back to simon povey season one champion dominic brennan his teammate up there in fourth it's very close between mike horder niles core then pete thicket guy edwards and dan mccauley all tied on points with one point back to josh wiggins there's some great battles going on in the middle of all of that. And then in the team's championship, it is Simon Povey and Dominic Brennan leading the way for Spontex CDM Esports Scourers right now. They're 10 points ahead of RD Simsport, who only have three points over Apex Racing Academy. It's looking like a bit of a three-horse race in the team's championship there, Ed. But at the end of the day, we had a great championship with two of them up there last season. So to have a third in the mix, I think, is going to make it even more exciting. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be great. And who knows, there could be a fourth with obviously the likes of Dan McCauley trying to get a bit of pace back. I think now he's trying to get over the worst of his injury and he's been showing some good promise in practice and both in this session and also in the se in the session that was put up last night as well. A few of the drivers got on and did some last minute laps and I have to say Dan McCauley was right up there with the best of them. So we'll see what he'll be able to do. He's just in behind his teammate. Lewis Ward, who are following on board with a lovely shot there of the drivers working together. And they'll need to do all of that and more if they're to have a good result in qualifying. It was, uh, if I can remember rightly, that was how I was able to get up onto the front row. It was just some lovely slipstream from my teammate. And something that we'll be needing to see from a lot of these drivers out here is good teamwork in qualifying. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of coordination that goes into making sure that you get decent laps on the board around here and making the most of all of that banking because it's very easy to just be on your own out there and get stuck with no slipstream and no help. Uh, just a quick shout out as well to the championship sponsors this season, Oris Digital, Crockery Direct, Blinds to Go, Midas Simulations and of course Derbyshire Holiday Homes as well. You'll see their logos scrolling through in the top right of your screen and each one of them providing us with obviously the means to be able to do this championship as well and take a lot of the stress off drivers from paying large entry fees for the season. It's a great, great cause to have so many sponsors with us. We love having them around and look forward, of course, to seeing whether we can keep them with us in the future as well. There's been some wonderful support from them in the special events as well that we have planned. We have some later on in the year as well to still come our way, so make sure you keep your eyes out for that. And we look at Mike Horder here, Ed, and Mike's had... An interesting season so far. He's had a podium finish, but he's... Uh, sorry, last season he had a, a podium finish, I should say. And this time he's just trying to match what he was doing last time round. I mean, there's not many uh, not many opportunities left in the season, I must say, because all of a sudden these next six weeks are going to fly by, aren't they? It's really going to be uh, a blink-and-you-miss-it scenario. I mean, absolutely, it's feels like it's been a little while since the last time. I mean, it was only two weeks, but it feels a lot longer. But now, like you say, the, the race is becoming thick and fast. 
and it's going to be a real test for these drivers because it's not something they've been used to. Usually these races are sort of bi-weekly, so if that looks like mm. change up to the format, it's going to really put the drivers through their paces and I mean they're going to have to have a quick turnaround of essentially after one race dusting it all off and going straight to the next one. That can be good for some drivers who, if they have good results, can carry that momentum forwards, but maybe a little bit harder for the drivers that take a little while to adapt and need those practice sessions throughout the week to properly get up to pace. Yeah, sometimes it can take a driver, like you say, that little bit of time, just the extra circulations and just muscle memory around a circuit like this is oh so important, especially when you're going into somewhere as difficult as Turn 1. We've got Mark Johnson going through it here. He just clips the tyre barrier on the inside. I don't know about you, but the loud noise of that actually made me jump then. That really, really did get me. But it's one of those corners where you have to take so many different lines in there over the course of a race, dependent on traffic, dependent on who you're battling with. And the braking zone never feels the same. You've got a lot of markers around you, but it's very difficult to always hit the same marker, if that makes sense. Like, there's, there's so many of them that you'll go into there and think, oh, that felt nice this time. But then by the time you get around another lap again, your brain won't remember exactly how you went through it. So, yeah, it's uh, an interesting yeah, part of the circuit, at least. The corner that we just saw Martin Kenya going through the bus stop chicane is a perfect example of that, Chaz, when you can see you can try and take the same line through, the muscle memory feels the same, but the car it can just sort of do different things the way it can react to the curves and the bumps. You have to constantly adapt yourself to that, and it's something that can really throw the drivers off and, like you say, throw them off their rhythm, and it's that extra bit of practice time that can really get the drivers dialed in again. Yes, another driver hitting the inside tire. Well, that was Jakob Spransky, and I think he's got suspension damage or something there. The front end was completely caved in. He decides, you know what? Can't make it any worse. Peels off into <laughs> the Armco barriers and turns to the pits. As we are into the last stages of practice, he'll hope that he won't make that same mistake in qualifying. And looking at the times all across the board, look at how close all of the drivers are. You can see the uh, top three. There's a decent spread, but then from the all the way down, it's we're talking a matter of tenths or half tenths really and then you go down from well tenth that was it's just incredibly close there isn't it well i mean goffin to barnes is one thousandth of a second byron crawford mm. to ben gregory is one thousandth of a second uh, you've got ten thousandths of a second from heinz Mayer to martin kenyon it's ridiculous there's eleven thousandths mm. then back from kenyon to john roberts yeah, it's going to be insanely, insane close this all night. I'm really looking forward to this one. The drivers will now be ready to head out on circuit for qualifying, and it should be a sunset into night race, this one as well. So the lighting conditions will get more and more golden as the evening goes on. It won't be complete pitch black darkness by the time the race is finished, which I think will look even better than if it was, because we'll still be able to see a lot of the cars and obviously what everybody is doing. There is the field making their way out now onto the circuit making their way out one by one. You can see Simon Povey there in the pit lane still sitting and not going anywhere at this moment in time. Dominic Brennan doing the same as well. I think they're probably going to work together here, actually. That is Dominic Brennan, sorry, in the foreground. You can see his teammate Simon just making his way down now. Now Dom gets going. So they're definitely going to be working on some slipstream. We need to Spontex CDM Esports scourers cars. Great noises coming from these machines, oh, yeah, Ed. It does good. sound great, doesn't it, from the end of the pit lane here. You've got the high-pitched V8s and the McLarens. You've got the mid-tones of the six-cylinder engines in the Porsche Cayman and BMW, and then the beefy V8s of the Mercedes and the Aston Martins. Lovely. I could also see, actually, uh, Neil's car was being very cheeky, waiting behind Simon, and just waiting until he went in the second the, that McLaren pulled off. So did the BMW. The smart work from Neil's car, because he knows who the drivers are that you need to follow. The quickest ones out there are obviously the best drivers to get slipstream off of. Uh, I think Neil's caught. With the straight line speed of that BMW, will put himself in a great position. Should he stay with those two Spontex TDM McLarens for this qualifying session? Yeah, he's certainly now just figuring out what the plan is. That's Philip Hopley just in front, flashing the brakes, saying, look, I'm just going to jump out of the way, guys. Don't you worry about me. They've got Mark Johnson in there as well. Mark was discussing the fact that earlier the setups that the guys were looking at obviously they all run on an iRacing setup which is the sprint fixed it's called it's basically for the uh, the IMSA pilot challenge sprint thing and basically they're all on that same sort of setup so the car should be very well balanced mm. like that but they all run maximum wing settings so it means that there's a lot of drag going on here and they're not in low down force oh, spec God. like they would be but yeah I was going to say that they're, they're just forcing the issue here at Simon and Dom and they're getting out of the way. Rob Sharp coming through. Rob nearly goes into the car in front. 
It was good to get Rob back on the grid, actually, for the second round of the championship at Road Atlanta. And he didn't have too bad a time as well, if I remember rightly. Just looking at his score, he got 14 points, did Rob. So that meant that he finished up in seventh place. So, again, a driver that's continually improving on our screens is Rob. And the start of this season has been no different. No, he's been a real good showing driver in that Porsche. Obviously not the only one like we had last season when it was... Uh it was just uh, Rob Sharp and was it Brian? Jacob Money it was, wasn't it? I think the two of them were um, partnered up together as the own Porsche drivers, but obviously they only have got a few more compatriots. Now, you can just see how difficult it can be with the traffic, because he's looking one way and then the other, just trying to get around. Oh, oh no, not please. really succeeding there with the Mercedes. And that, I think, is precisely the reason why we saw Simon Povey and Dominic Brennan waiting for so long on the back straight coming into the bus stop chicane to get themselves clear of nonsense like that. Yeah, it was one of those moments where Rob felt he had no other choice really than to go down the inside because he was braking that much later. And I don't think Philip Hopley knew he was there, to be honest. I think that's all that came down to. Uh, we've got the two Scallant Pro driving machines out there once again tonight, or at least I think we've got them both out there. Doesn't look like we've got... Where's Tom Weston on our field? I can't see Tom out there tonight, unfortunately. We've got Fausto Pinto in his Aston Martin. Uh, Tom has actually changed to the Mercedes, I believe, but he's not in the same livery, but still part of the same team. Uh, we've got a lot of the RD Simsport cars out there. We've got the boss man, Andy Marston, in the number triple one McLaren 570S GT4. His teammate for this season in SRM Racing Team A is Paul Goffin. Look at the toe he's given as well, actually, mm. to... These cars in behind, is that Simon Povey there at Dominic the Brennan. head of the train? That's Dominic Brennan. Need to be careful through here. It's going to be a nice toe out of Boston Up Chicane. And I think you can see the boss man. You might realise that there's a car close behind. So it needs to get out of the way, though. He's going to get to Dominic to go all the way, the long way around the outside. You just here, this sixth gear in the McLaren, it bogs down just a touch, but it's got a lot of room to go, so the slipstream is really strong for the Maccas. Up to the line, you can see the ball flying in formation as they break the beam. What lap times will we be seeing coming out as the benchmarkers? And actually, Simon Pope is only down in eighth place. Dominic Brennan, did he actually get time on the board? Yeah, Dom was much further down, he was 15th. Much further then. down. Let's look oh, at look that. At this, though. Oh. <laughs> Apex Racing Academy first and second. Dan McCauley goes on to provisional pole position here at Daytona ahead of his teammate Lewis Ward after yet another fantastic display of great teamwork by the pair of them. Paul Goffin is close to completing another lap. He's got Jakob Schmanski in front of him running the blue wheels on the car for Spontex CDM Esports. Good to see Jakob back out on the grid. We look forward to welcoming Gary Toll back to the grid as well. Gary's had a lot of technical issues with a new PC recently that's meant in it being sent back and returned again and still not in quite working form and he's having issues with the stability of the thing, bless him. So we look forward to seeing Gary back on the grid soon and wish him all the best. He will be teaming up with Jakob, of course, as the championship continues in the beautiful white machine. Obviously, the teal car is part of the Scourers team as Spontex CDM Esports. It was an idea birthed by Simon Povey. As there goes Goffin up to fifth, and Schmansky goes into the top ten in ninth place. He'll be happy with that one. Really solid lap from him. Martin Kenyon just crossed the line to complete a time as well. Christian Saruta hasn't put a lap on the board yet, actually, Ed. So I'm mm. expecting big things from Christian because he's usually very, very quick. Yeah, he is, I think place that was catching the drivers out a lot is the chicane because you can get a lot of time if you get it just about right but in the same sort of or rather on the other side of the coin you can completely lose all the hard work done earlier on in the lap so it's all about weighing up the risk versus the reward and i think now it's just about not really taking any unnecessary risks as look at that callum brandt to the top of the timing sheets it can be done in the mercedes go quicker than the McLarens for a moment it was McLarens all in the top five but mm. laps from Porsches and a few BMWs have put an end to that and it was core up into fifth oh, place Lewis oh, Ward oh. though just gets that little bit more pace from Callum Brandt did he have to at all on that lap he might have got a little bit from the Aston Martin in front and McCauley there in third not far away either so it looks like a uh, good 
session so far for Apex Racing Academy drivers. So two actually for RD Supersport, Callum Wright in the second and James Holman there in fourth. So it's going to be very intriguing just to see what the Porsche can do. And I was actually doing a few laps with James Holman and he was very impressive, very quick. We were sort of working together, giving ourselves toe out and about on the circuit. I helped him out, he helped me out. And that time from James Holman is a little bit off of what I know he can do. He could probably get closer to the time of Callum Brandt, maybe even Lewis Ward, if he can just get it right in the slipstream. So he's been doing good things from James Holman out here tonight. This is important for Christian Saruta to get a lap time on the board. Oof. And he does. Only 12 fastest, but he's got a benchmark. He's got that sort of cushion almost to fall back on should this next lap not come off. We know he's got good pace in racecraft, so if he does qualify down in 12th place, it's not the end of the world here at Daytona. There is plenty of opportunities to make up positions. There really is. As all oh, dearie me, that's Fausto Pinto clipping the wall. Clips that inside tyre barrier. I'm intrigued by how many people we've seen do that tonight, you know. It's actually very easy to do by the look of it. I've not seen many people do it before. As Holman crosses the line, he races legends, does James Holman. He's a very successful driver. And the Maznars core goes fastest in the BMW. Getting slipstream off Guy Edwards in front of him. He's got Simon Povey now moving up into fifth. Dominic Brennan up there in eighth. This is great teamwork from Apex, from Spontech CDM Esports, and from RD Simsport as well. RD have got four cars inside the top ten. Spontex have got two, Apex Racing Academy have got two, and Niles Cora, the Chicane Online Racing Machine, the lone Chicane Online Racing Machine, is up there spoiling the fun for him. Mike Horder is the best of the rest in the boosted Jericho car with his teammate Ben Gregory right behind him. So fantastic stuff so far. Great entertainment in qualifying alone. We've got five minutes and 50 seconds left, so it could all still change here, Ed. It only takes one decent lap. Yeah, Simon Povey's easily got about six more tenths in him if he can get the right space out on circuit it's all about just getting it timed brilliantly he was able to do a 152.2 in clear air no slipstream whatsoever so if he can get a little bit of help on his final few laps he's going to be a serious threat for that pole position currently occupied by the bmw of neil's core what a lap that was got some excellent track position there really thought it out brilliantly but then execute the lap as well and now you can see lewis ward and dan mccauley exiting the pit lane together to try and work together and to try and get that top spot absolutely teamwork is oh so important here we just saw christian saruta go up a position as well he's now up into eighth place in this qualifying session still eight tenths of a second off the top spot but boy is it close in the middle as well there mm. once again so so close as identical times actually from ben gregory and one of his boosted teammates, John Barnes. Funnily enough, actually, Mike Horder, Ben Gregory, John Barnes and John Roberts, all two boosted Jericho cars, then two boosted motorsport cars, actually. All four of them right in the middle of the pack together at the moment. As up to second place goes Simon Povey, a tenth off. Dominic Brennan goes second. So suddenly, the two Spontech CDM Esports cars move back ahead of Apex Racing Academy with RD Simsport in the mix as well. This is excellent stuff. I'm really enjoying this qualifying session, but we knew that it was going to be like this, didn't we, Ed? It mm. usually is here at Daytona. It's a very spicy session because of the difference in people getting slipstream, difference in not, and obviously the pace of people in the wiggly bit in the middle as well. That's where yeah. a lot of the drivability comes in, isn't it? Yeah, the Porsche is really strong on the corners on the inside of the uh, road course. Really strong into turn one, I've noticed. That was where James took a lot of time out of me. But then sort of coming through the final corner onto the banking when I was in the McLaren, he seemed to struggle a little bit in, I don't know, getting the power down the car is a little bit unbalanced at points. And I think through there, it doesn't necessarily help him out too much, but have a good infield section, catch right up to the cars in front and it doesn't really matter too much as long as you get into the slipstream. I do love the uh, practice sessions that get put on during the week. It's good for commentators like us to get some special insider information. That's exactly what I've just seen with Simon Povey's lap time. I said he can get that little bit more pace underneath him, even in clear air. And I think he's done exactly that there with the 1 minute 52.2. Now all he needs is a tiny bit more slipstream and he'll be up there right with Neil's core for that whole position. Just seeing him now. Does Niels have any assistance for his next lap? I can't see any cars. There's a little bit of a tail, and I think it's that Callum Brandt just up ahead. So he might be getting some slipstream. 
Doesn't want to be too close though and get held up on the infield. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be so, so careful and listen to the lift there. That's really not going to help his lap time. James Holman goes a bit quicker though, up into seventh place with his most recent time. Two thousandths ahead of his teammate Guy Edwards. It's <laughs> so, so close. But Nils caught fastest at the minute in the BM. And to be fair, I did say to him, didn't we, last time out, that the BM has been really, really good recently. The straight line speed, he doubted it. He felt like the car yeah. was really draggy and it wasn't that good. But obviously it's showing that it's got the pace around here. He's actually handing it to Christopher Smith at the moment, who's usually the BMW whiz in this championship. But again, look at the competition between the two. I mean, it's hardly fair to say that Christopher's not pulling his weight here because he's really, really doing a good job. The amount of amazing drivers in this championship gets better and better every season. And right now we are on such a high with great talent in the field. I mean, all the way down, it's so, so close between everybody. I love it. I really do love it. Lewis Ward with a purple. So sort of second to last sector here. Will it be enough to get pole position? They will have one more go. And look at that, perfectly timed. Getting right out of the way, going high, and then trying to space it out as they come across the line now to start a final time. And that could be enough. Yes, it is by a tenth and a bit of a second. One minute, 52.060. So the drivers need to essentially get very close to, if not underneath the 52 to 51s now essentially for pole position. That was a very nice lap time by Lewis Ward. Perfectly done as well by Dan McCauley. Just to go onto the high side and give Lewis Ward the shortest run possible to the checkered flag, or not to the checkered flag, rather, to the timing line. Drew still, Sorry, drivers man. still on laps and looking to improve. Yep, Drew Fletcher's just crossed the line and he's one of the championship sponsors as well at Derbyshire Holiday Homes. He's had a very long day today though, Drew tells me. He's a good friend of mine and he's certainly going to be uh, feeling the tiredness coming into this race so he's uh, he's going to be forgiven if he's not quite on his usual pace but he's enjoying driving the mclaren to be fair he says it's a very pointy car and it certainly behaves itself when you just give it a little bit of time of day you know you can't really force this thing to do exactly what you want straight away he's got i believe paul goffin right behind him no actually it's not him it's andrew shepherd in the number 76 machine it's right there in the wings in this gorgeous srm colored car and you can see there, just going around the second of the two hairpins, it's a bit tricky on the exit. As Drew has to back out of it, and Shepard continues on with his lap. No Watch major improvements Chaz at the moment. Well. Simon Povey is improving. So while they aren't major improvements, they are still improvements, and they could be very important because look at the train of cars yeah. that he is right in behind. He's not going to be getting just one helping a slipstream. He's going to be getting an absolute bucket load, and this could be pivotal. Lewis Ward has improved in the first sector, but he's had no help whatsoever for the remainder of the lap. So it has to be an absolutely demon effort for him to get it over the line. And he's going to be the one, and he sets the time, but he'll just have to sit and watch now and hope that his that time earlier on is enough. And will it be with this man chasing him down with all of the help in the world for Simon Povey? Is it going to be enough? Slightly wider the apex there, and he's going to be slow, I think, coming out of the bus stop. He was a little bit shy of the mark. And that could be enough. Lovely flying formation there by the Oris Racing Green Machines as they cross the line. Niles Core in second position isn't on an improvement right now. Christopher Smith certainly is though in 11th place. He's looking good. So too is James Holman. All of these guys all slipstreaming one another. Callum Brandt in the mix as well. Let's keep our eyes on these lot and see exactly where they end up. Keep your eye on the timing screen on the left for the lap times. Brandt improves. Holman improves. Povey doesn't improve. He doesn't validate no. the time. Unbelievable he was, stuff. He was just through the bus stop. He yeah. just had one little mistake, slightly a bit foul of the apex, a little bit too late on the turn and potentially, but all it takes is for one little mistake. You can do so many laps around here, but when it comes down to it, it's just a fact of this shorter qualifying session. The drivers have less room for error, and sadly, it's seen Povey down in fourth place, but it's not the be-all and end-all. He's still on the second row, and like we say here, qualifying, it doesn't really mean diddly squat, does it? No, absolutely not. We've seen it before that people can win races from further down. I mean, Callum Brandt won the very first race of the season from ninth on the grid on a circuit where slipstream isn't really a thing. I'm sure it was a great fuel-saving strategy, but you can definitely play the game around here and have strategy on your mind. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. James Holman's been a great addition to the series as well. 
like I say, Legends racer, so he knows his squirty little small racing cars. So he's definitely going to be a fan of this Porsche and the way it moves. But great stuff by RD Simsport. Chicane Online Racing is Niles Core getting the BMW on the front row. Two Spontex CDM Esports cars in there. Apex Racing Academy bookending the top seven places. Christian Saruta in the top ten. Rob Sharp as well. Fantastic. Really, really strong session. That I enjoyed that one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of people that do like to whinge a little bit about the McLaren being overpowered, but you can see even over one lap, which is usually that car's strength, well, one of them is on pole position. There's a great variety in those sort of top 10 positions, aren't there? There's plenty of Mercedes, a couple of BMWs, a couple of Porsches as well. Mm. The only cars that aren't too great, sadly, the Aston Martins. Yeah, it is a real shame, to be fair. They, uh, they don't seem to be having much fun with it at the moment, do the Astons. We'll have a quick look through our grid, though, as we get ready for round three of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. And it's Lewis Ward on pole position. The reigning champion takes pole for, I think, the first time this season, actually, is it not? I think it's been Simon Povey for both so far, is it not? Yes, it has. Simon yes, scored has, yeah. pole position in both rounds. So, yeah, the first time for Lewis Ward. Niles Core, second place. Great qualifying from Niles. I'm excited to see how he can get on in the BM at the front of the pack. Callum Brandt and Simon Povey make it a very exciting row two. Ahead of their backup, Dominic Brennan and James Holman. Dan McCauley is seventh with definite work to do to help his teammate at the front of the pack. Guy Edwards in eighth place. Christian Saruta is ninth and Rob Sharp rounds out your top ten. Very, very exciting first part of the field, that. Christopher Smith next up with John Barnes alongside him. Those two should have a good scrap as well with Mike Horder and Ben Gregory and John Roberts in there to help out for Boosted. Kim Such is 16th. Good qualifying that by Kim ahead of Byron Crawford and Paul Goffin. Blaine Sparling in the gorgeous Scuderia Chicken House machine is 19th. And then we have Drew Fletcher rounding out the top 20. Heinz Mayer and Rob Sutherland make up row 11 with Mark Johnson and Andrew Shepard on row 12. Then we have Martin Kenyon alongside Jakob Schmansky. Andrew Marston 27th with Fausto Pinto behind him. And Philip Hopley and Ralph Mayer make up the last row of the grid. All right now, Ed. Everybody's going to be waiting to go at this point. They're going to be taking their time. It's a very packed grandstand on the outside of the circuit, as you see, but it's also a very packed grid on the back straight as well. Is there anything that we can potentially predict for the start of this race, mate? Because it could be a bit of everything here. There could be accidents in the first couple of corners, which they usually are at Daytona, or it could be a case of people taking it too easy and losing ground. What do you reckon? I think it's just going to have to be some of the drivers in the championship probably taking things a little bit easier, the likes of Lewis Ward. He knows that he's going to have quick cars in behind him and he doesn't need to risk anything. Other drivers that don't have as much to lose, the likes of Niels Core, potentially even Simon Povey, who's a little bit down in the order after a very poor start to the season, will be looking to claw something back and might be inclined to throw caution to the wind. So we'll see exactly what the drivers plan going into the first corner. One thing I will want to look out for, though, is Christopher, Christopher Smith for Adi Simsport. He didn't have the best qualifying session down in 11th place, but we know that he's quite coy when it comes to strategy. So while he might not necessarily go for the on-track positions, keep an eye on what he does in the pits. He might try and pull something out here. It'll be difficult because this circuit uh, used the fuel like nobody's business, but if there's any man that can, it'll be Christopher Smith. Very tightly packed then at the front of the field, and it's down to Lewis Ward to put his foot down and get round three of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge underway. And would you listen to that? What a fantastic racket as they go down towards turn one. And it's Callum Brand on the inside of Niles Core in the BMW. He gets the place taken early. Simon Povey goes down the inside there as well. Guy Edwards and Dominic Brennan side by side in the mid pack, nearly making contact. I think everybody's making it through tidy. Mark Johnson's taken it easy and lost a couple of places. He's actually gone down three spots already. But at the front of the pack, Lewis Ward gets it done initially as there's a bit of argy-bargy in the middle of the pack. Rob Sharp and Christopher Smith getting reacquainted. Andrew Shepard also three wide there on the inside of Mark Johnson and Jakob Schmansky. But great stuff by the field there, Ed. Really tidy at the start. Nice. That was really good by all of the drivers there to keep it clean and not try anything too silly. Oftentimes when you see drivers get clean through the first corner here at Daytona, they almost lose their heads completely coming into the hairpin. But everyone seems to have kept a nice level head so far. But let's see how long that lasts because it is Daytona and it is known. Oh, look at that big wiggle there from Christian Saruta. They were too eager on the power and I think the traction control just kicked in for a brief moment. 
He's kept it going, even though he's lost some slight momentum in the straight line. I think he'll score at home. Hopefully we're trading places as well for a moment. Yeah, Simon Pope and Callum Brandt actually having a bit of a switch around there. Simon taking third position off the RD Simsport machine. Niles Cole managed to get back in front of Callum as they went into the International Horseshoe and since then there haven't been any further changes. Look like Mike Horder got a little bit squirrely on the way into the bus stop. He's lost ground there to Christopher Smith who oh, will just run straight into the back of him. Not quite sure that the uh, the magenta dazzled Chris for just a moment there. But Mike's actually came two places from where he started. This is going to get scary. They need to be very careful here. You see Ben Gregory backing out of that one making sure he doesn't, one, run into his teammate, and two, move around so much that he causes contact with Christopher Smith on the outside. That BMW's got some right legs, though. No <laughs> slipstream, and it got in front. There's proof to Niles Cole that it's not slow in a straight line. And so there's battles going on ahead. James Holman's down the inside of Dan McCauley. The two of them rub panels, and down the inside of both of them goes Dominic Brennan now. Great fighting near the front. Apologies for the frame rate, everybody, but I'm sure you can understand that this is a bit intensive, this one. It's, oh, no, Rob Sutherland's off. Yeah, did it just a little bit too eager potentially was their contact it looked like the car went off at a difficult angle so the, i can imagine it might have been something that went right oh Ooh, yeah there was just a checkup wasn't there the car's coming together it tried to sneak by on the inside but got collected sadly yeah that was nevertheless good. though we've got a great battle up in front don't we of uh kind of blinking in and out which is a slight concern then. I have to say, I've been impressed by uh, James Holman after the laps that I did. It takes, doesn't take much to impress me, but I have to say, I am really pleased with how he's been able to get going on this opening lap. Up in position head of Dominic Brennan. Nevertheless, he's been quite punching, trying to get some places. Yeah, that's the thing. He's not one of these drivers that's just been sitting back and letting it come to him. You know, he's one of the drivers that's pushing on and making the moves, having a go at people, and really getting amongst it. You know, there's, there's so many drivers that do just sit back a bit sometimes and, and they don't push hard enough, in my opinion. They just, I don't know, they're, they're not always hmm. doing badly necessarily. You know, they're not doing anything wrong, but they're not the, the renegades that like to make the moves and throw it up the inside of people and cause exciting racing. We call it having a Turkington moment because Colin, sure, he's not the most exciting driver in the BTCC, but he's the one that knows how to win a championship because he knows when to pick his fights and when not to. And there's a few drivers in this series that we see that from, to be fair, and they score the points. So I'm excited to see what, uh, well, who can continue on and obviously make the most of those moments, let's say. Yeah, exactly. So let's see who will, well, I think Niels Kohl might need a few moments like that if he's to catch back up to those what he's been able to close the gap a little bit. I think the BMW struggles in the opening couple of laps just to get the tyres properly warmed up and into the zone, but now, close it down it was actually for a moment about 1.2 seconds so starting to turn up a little bit more now as is Simon Povey so while the front four have started to expand a little bit that'll start to congest once more when the rhythm starts to get there for all drivers yeah that's it it's going to be a bit of a I don't know almost a mandatory part of the race for everybody that they need to settle into a rhythm slightly and get used to what the car is doing, get used to what the drivers around them are doing as well. Look at how close this massive train is here. Again, apologies for the frame rate, everyone. I know it's not optimum tonight, but it seems like these GT4 cars are becoming more and more intensive every single round that we do. I've not changed anything since last time, and all of a sudden it just seems like the frame rate doesn't want to play ball. But we've got Mike Horder chasing down the BMW of Christopher Smith. He's got Ben Gregory, his team. First 20th chairs, all within a second of one another. Each car is a second from, at least a second from the other car ahead. That's very true, from actually. first down to 20th. That's bonkers. It really is. There's nobody more than, what, 10 car lengths back from the car in front? It's just nuts. So there's great spread, and obviously that's within slipstreaming range as well for most people. So it means that they're going to stay together like that unless we see major mistakes. Even back here as well, from Jakob Schwanski back to Martin Kenyon, Drew Fletcher, Mark Johnson, Andrew Shepard, Fausto Pinto, Andy Marston as well. They're all within a second of one another. It's bonkers, really bonkers, but great stuff. And it's what we expect from the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. We always have a good time when it's race night. It's always an entertaining race, as well as a very complex one because of different strategies, different cars, balance of performance, different drivers that have good spots and bad spots over the course of a race. So yeah, I'm loving it so far this season. Once again, very grateful to be able to put this on and of course to broadcast it here on Chaz Drake Media for the drivers for putting on such a good show as well and 
I mean, we've got one of the friendliest communities that we've got, really. You know, it's, it's just insane how hard these guys can race each other, but then have ultimate respect for each other after the flag as well. It is brilliant, isn't it? It's why I'm so glad to not only have raced in it, but also have the pleasure of commentating on it now as well. And just to see everyone getting along so well and just the love for racing, I think, is paramount about everything else as well. The support outside of the race meetings, um, you can see uh, the driver support as well. For the sponsors as well, we see uh, Annie Marston whenever he sees uh, Derbyshire, Derbyshire Holiday Homes mentioned on the television. He gets a nice little <laughs> snapshot and puts it in the chat. It's great to see the uh, fact that it doesn't just stay in the Discord. It's something that the drivers are really happy to have outside of the uh, online world as well because I think a few of them got together a uh, track day as well if I can remember rightly. Yes there was a track day at Donington Park just this week so the guys have been uh, all meeting up there and there was a lot of people involved so it was always nice to, to see people not just obviously racing one another in the sim but meeting in the real world as well and, and getting to know people that Know, that they've, they've known online for quite a while through lockdown yeah. and through COVID and so on. There's so many people that have been introduced to each other and everybody's all met online really because of COVID and so on. And it's, it's just lovely to see that personal meeting in person in the real world outside of all this. It's yeah. great. Really do love it. Yeah, we have great together here in the SRM GT4 Challenge and we have it again now on the circuit because look at how close these three are getting together now. It's really starting to hop. You can imagine in the cockpit of Lewis Ward, who's going to be looking more and more in his rearview mirror at what Niels Kaur and Simon Povey are going to be doing because they have closed right up to him now. Yeah, Simon's got a good view of the back of that BMW as well. Oh, there's been drama further down. Drew Fletcher is off. He had the coming together earlier on, actually, at turn one. Can't remember who it was that he had contact with, but it eventually meant that Rob Sutherland went off the road. Drew now doing a nine-point turn to get back on the circuit. That's a real shame to see. It was just Mark and Drew. I think Mark had a drama. Oh, there was contact in front. Oh, he's, Drew's hit Mark in Kenyon. Oh, and then Fausto Pinto in there as well. Look at the checkup. Great stop there by, was that Ralph Mayer? It was indeed, wasn't it? But there was Jacob Schmetzky was smart as well to stay well wide of all of that. Oh, Mark just went in a little bit hot and with all the battling going on in front it checked up in front of him and there wasn't really much he could do there it's so hard to get the car stopped normally down at turn one here at Daytona and I'm afraid that that is a big big incident for them and they may need damage repairing there because it won't help them in a straight line and it's such a high speed circuit that's what you need but look at this train of cars this is fantastic it's down to 14th now that it's a second because after John Barnes, John Roberts is 1.4 seconds back. But even then, they're still close together back there as well. Heinz Mayer in 20th place is still part of one humongous train of machines in front. You can see them all the way down the banking, evenly spaced. It's like Gran Turismo 7, this, where it spaces them out evenly at the start of the race. But still, great entertainment so far. Lovely to see everybody in chat, by the way. Jakub Szymanski did pop up in the chat earlier to say he was too high up in the order as Niles Core gets to the highest point of said order and takes the race lead. Do you think that's a little bit of a smart play by Lewis Ward, just letting him through there, Ed? Yeah, but I'm just saving a bit of fuel and playing the long game as well, though. It's going to be good for Niels Court to set the pace and to execute the race how he plans it. Obviously, he has a, I guess, a target lap time in mind. So he doesn't need to worry about using any extra bit of tyres with the dirty air. Obviously, when you're in the wake of a car that's in front of you, you don't have the same aerodynamic force. You lean on the tyres that little bit more. Now, Neil Scorey is able to nurse them a little while longer and it should be good for the final stint of, or the final part of this first thing. Because some of the drivers, Chaz, they do take tyres. Others opt not to. I think Simon Povey is one of the interesting cases where he sort of does a little bit of practice and just sees how the car reacts. Mm. So obviously you have the imbalance of heat in the tyres for the first few laps and it can cause a a little bit of instability and sometimes it's actually slower to nurse the car for the first sort of lap or two than it is to have fresh tyres for the latter stages of a stint. So yeah. that could be something that drivers will think about. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the key things that you've always got to manage within motorsport, of course, is that you are as fast as you can be for as long as you can be. So if you do have a chance to you know, run on used tyres or where the tyres will be wearing down at a certain part of a stint. You have to consider when the car's going to be light on fuel, if it's going to be harder to manage at that point. Or if you do 
save enough time to make up for the fact that you are going to be on shattered tyres by the time the race ends. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's combinations of different elements that they have to think about in these races, and that's what makes it exciting. Because we've got an hour, and because it's 40% fuel limit, they will definitely pit twice around here. But it's whether they do anything with the tyres to go on top of the fuel amounts they've got to consider as well. Yeah, that's something I think the drivers will, will be focusing on is what they do and when they do it. I think sometimes we might, we have seen drivers as well opt for taking their shorter stop as their first stop. I think Simon Povey's been a real sort of champion of that strategy where he takes his first stop that's a lot shorter than all of those around him. It was a real bad pain of my existence when it was uh, <laughs> getting him fighting it out because he always seemed to pit and spend about six seconds less in the pits, give himself that six second buffer out on the road. And then, because I wasn't in the slipstream mode to race with it and slow him down, he'd just slowly extend it. Then when my stop was shorter, I was still just outside of the slipstream range and he could pull away again. So that's something that I think so I might try out here tonight. But the only worry is if other drivers have that idea and he's stuck with them, if they start to battle, they'll slow each other down. And then all of a sudden, you'll have a longer stop at the end than those who might be a lot closer behind you than you would have hoped. So it's a bit of a gamble. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you've got people in the field like Callum Brandt that's been doing very different things to everybody else strategy-wise so far this season, but he's been the only one really to show a big, big difference in strategy. I suppose, though, it depends on the circuit, and this is not going to be one of the circuits where you can do that. It's Niles Cole that's blinking in and out a little bit now as well, actually, Ed. So there's been a couple of connection issues for Callum before now, and... All of a sudden, Niles Cora, our race leader, having a few of them too. So we'll keep our eyes on that. It's not something that they will ever get kicked out of a race for, but obviously if it affects their racing, sometimes drivers do tend to just pull over if it's bad enough. It's just been one of those, though, hasn't it, where it's not been that negative so far for them. So it's just about how drivers manage it when they're battling them. You have to be very wise around people like that sometimes, don't you? It's not their fault at the end of the day. And while you're racing, you can't really do anything about it, can you? Yeah, I mean, you're speaking to me as if I'm the one who's seen the cars blinking, but I'm usually the one that's blinking and out with my connection, <laughs> so I'm always on the receiving end. I've had it at times where I've blinked out and then reappeared on the in, on, like inside of another car, and that's been my race completely over with. It happened um, once at Petit Le Mans, I think a couple of years ago, where it was up at turn three. I blinked out, reappeared inside of a LMP2 car, and I got spat off the other car didn't even register that I was there and carried on it was just a case of funny connection and all of a sudden that's the race over with so it's a shame but it's something that like you say the drivers can't really control and it does need awareness from everyone not just the cars behind or in front of the linking party but also the car itself if they are aware of the connection issues they have to have as well just an acute knowledge of where they will be like be reappearing. Yeah, you have to just play it safe in so many different ways. And Niles Core has definitely been blinking quite a lot though. You keep seeing him drop down the timing screen for just a moment and then pop back up again. It will be causing a little bit of concern for the drivers behind, especially because of the fact that obviously iRacing simulates this so well, but when he's not there, obviously he can't be there to provide any slipstream for anybody behind. So it's a brief moment where it's like an invisibility cloak that really helps him out because he'll disappear the car behind for maybe just half a second or so won't receive any slipstream and it may affect the uh, the top lap, the top speed here it's actually affect the race and their positions but we'll see how it goes on we're a quarter of the way through right now though 45 minutes left of this race and it is niles core leading lewis ward simon povey callum brandt james holman dominic brennan dan mccauley guy edwards rob sharp and christian saruta in the top 10 with christopher smith just behind and we have the boosted teams as well. Mike Horder, John Barnes, Ben Gregory and John Roberts. Byron Crawford, Blaine Sparling, Kim Such, Paul Goffin and Heinz Mayer. They're having a great fight at the moment as well, Ed. We were just looking at this a moment ago. What a lovely little scrap this is between the Aston Martin, the Porsches and the McLaren. Yeah, this is what I love to see. Look at that. Up the inside goes Blaine Sparling. Beautiful looking Skidder Chip and Porsche. We're going now with the equally lovely Sim Racing team. Sim Racing Magazine car. Look at that, up the inside of... I think that was a brilliant move, wasn't it, by the 12. Up the inside of Kim Such goes Byron Crawford. Just have to sit in behind with Paul Goffin. Looks for a little move up the inside, but I think when you get into the infield, you can see 
I thought for a moment that was, that was nowhere near close enough, but I thought no. Byron Crawford was going to look for a dive up the inside of Lane Sparling. I think maybe he was just defending from Heinz Mayer there, actually. Mm. I think Heinz may have had just... May have had... Oh, why have we not used that one? Oh, He's had a little God, look up the was... inside, and then, yeah, basically Paul said no. Uh, his teammate Kim Such is just in front as well, so he's going to be trying to work together with him as this goes on. Back up to the front, Niles Corris still got Lewis Ward all over him, and you can expect that while these guys are all close together, there won't be too many overtakes here. It's not going to be the most thrilling part of the race, these guys at the front. But still, those that are intrigued by it will get excited about the fact that it's all about the chase, isn't it, Ed? That's the main thing here. It's chasing one another, staying in the slipstream, and enjoying the run of this part of the race, I guess, because there's so many layers to this race where people could pit, people could not, and affecting the slipstream of those around you that we really could never guess what's going to happen until we see those first pit stops. Yeah, I mean, anyone from this sort of train of cars down towards uh, Rob Sharp, I believe, is in with a chance of winning. Yeah, it's, 100%. It's you know, close all the way. They're still in sight of the leaders. I mean, if you look at it, Rob Sharp, he's only, what, three and a half seconds back from the race lead? Mm. That's something that's not really at all significant at this early stage of proceedings. If you have a few good strategy calls in the pits, you can easily make up at least three positions by having a good run in and out of the pit lane. And then, slipstream, gain a couple more places in a straight line, it could be golden. Simon Povey just had a moment there, actually, and Callum Brandt's got in front of him. Just on the exit of the International Horseshoe, Simon just clips the grass a little bit. He's pushing very hard. We've seen a couple of mistakes from Simon this season, which isn't like him, to be fair, but... I think it's it's great to see that there's this competition for him. You know, you and him had a great battle in season one. He then had a fantastic season racing against Lewis Ward last season for the championship. And then this season as well, you know, he's, he's really having to properly push on as Philip Hopley has gone off the road. He can't quite get the car going again as it slides around on the grass. He eventually gets moving. I'm not sure if he had more contact with somebody here. There's an incident going on in front. Fausto Pinto. Oh, he just runs wide on his own there, actually. Does Philip? I think he saw a potential incident ahead and got distracted mm. by it. It's very easy to do that, isn't it? Get excited by something going on ahead of you and lose ground. Yeah, you, there's sometimes the drivers like to look far ahead of them into the corner, just rather than looking where they are, they look where they want to be. I think that was the case of looking where Philip didn't want to be, but sadly ended up there anyway because he was looking just a little too far ahead into the corner. What was going on, not focusing on the corner itself. Here we go, they're on board with Mike Porter, leading car of the boosted sort of quartet that are still occupying 12th, 13th, 14th and 15th, but make that now, well, 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th, because uh, Christian Saruta has made his trip to the pit lane and relatively early as well. This could be an intriguing strategy call in the Pelifi race some car. Absolutely could be. There's a lot of blinking going on here, though, I'm afraid, by James Holman. His car is disappearing every couple of seconds here in front of Dominic Brennan. And I think in this moment, all Dominic can do is just run his usual lines, you know, not try and go down the inside of James to force any unconventional lines that he wouldn't normally take unless he was defending. Dom just has to drive the car as he drives the car here. And I'm afraid there's not much else that can be done if they do come together. I'm afraid Paul Goffin has had a coming together with somebody. He was overtaking Kim Such in the Porsche. I think those very bright white wheels will be a little bit red with embarrassment right now if he's had a moment. Chasing the Porsche down the inside. Oh, he's just gone way just... too hot. Again, look, just one of those moments where the driver gets distracted by what's going on around them and you can miss your braking point. And, ah, oh, look, the left rear is absolutely written off, isn't it? Yeah, he backs yeah, the pins as well. Yeah, really hefty hit into the wall there. Nils Kaur, though, will be hoping for no similar scrapes as he leads ahead of Lewis Ward. Callum Brent there for company as well in third. James Holman doesn't seem to be blinking as much now when they've gotten out onto the banking. Oh, as I say that, he blinks just for a brief moment. I think um, Dominic Brennan and Simon Povey will be hoping that that doesn't affect them because he's right in between the both of them. He's doing a good job at the moment, isn't he? In, uh, in terms of his pace, is James Holman, but it's probably that his internet can't keep up with how fast he is. It's probably what it normally is. But right now, it's Niles Cole, Lewis Ward, Callum Brandt, Simon Povey, James Holman, Dominic Brennan, Dan McCauley, Guy Edwards, Rob Sharp, Mike Horder, and Christopher Smith comes into the pit lane in the BMW. So he's another one that decides to jump out of the way, jump ship just for now. 
we've got Heinz Mayer and Kim Such, his teammate, gloriously crossing the line together. Well, never mind. Heinz Mayer goes into the pits as Kim Such carries on. Byron Crawford also in the pits. Jakob Schmanski coming down pit lane as well. So we've got a couple of cars in the pit lane now taking the first of their two stops as the rest of the field continue to just trickle on through now. Some of the bottom end of the order just making their way past. But at the front of the field, there's some great fighting still going on. It's all so, so close together at 30 FPS. We've got Guy Edwards right in the thick of it as well. Not spoken much about Guy in this race, but he's running another solid drive here in the number 55 Mercedes. He's another one of them from RD Simsport that's come into this championship and shown great pace so far, isn't he? He's been very impressive in the early stages of the championship. I'm excited to see whether any of these guys can, I don't want to call it surprise victory, but whether they can eke out a win over our usual big hitters at the front as the championship progresses. Yeah, and you talk about the championship, and let's focus as well on the team's championship, if we can, for mm. a moment. Yeah. Let's ignore Nils Corp because he's the only driver for Chicane Online Racing. And we look at, it goes Apex Race Academy, RD Simsport, Spontex ADM Esports Scourers, RD Simsport, Spontex ADM Esports Scourers, and Apex Race Academy. The top three teams are all together, no <laughs> other cars in between them. That's very true, actually. We've got Povey and Brennan for Spontex CDM Esports Scourers. RD Simsport's main first team, let's say, is Callum Brandt and James Holman. And then, of course, Dan McCauley and Lewis Ward are, as Apex Racing Academy is into the pits, comes, well, everyone. That's interesting. I was not expecting that. Out of all things we could have speculated, Ed, it was not that. <laughs> it just not shows see how that important going. the slipstream is. They don't want to be without it. Wow. Oh, there was actually contact there. There was contact between James Holman and Dan McCauley. And James has missed his box slightly. Both the Spontex CDM Esports McLarens take tyres. Everybody is in. But James Holman and Dan McCauley made contact there. I don't think that they were ghosting through each other, which is very strange. As out into the lead of the race, <laughs> by the look of it, would have been one of the McLarens there, actually. That was... Uh, who was that? Dan Dan McCauley? Has Dan McCauley jumped all of them? Dan McCauley has jumped all of them, yes. <laughs> wow. How on earth has he done that? Dan McCauley is going to lead this race, then, as they come out of the pits. They've got to stay on the pit limiter, though. There yeah. it is. There it is. There you go. Oh, my word. That was mad from Dan McCauley. He jumped a lot of them. Callum Brent's up into uh, second place. James Holman's jumped up into third. This has been a real shake-up for the rest. Said any drivers can climb up through into the lead if they have a good trip in the pit lane. And I've seen exactly that, haven't we? Do you know what's daft is that Dan McCauley had a longer pit stop than the two cars behind him as well, Callum Brandt and James Holman. Then Niles Core, Lewis Ward, Simon Povey, Dominic Brennan and Rob Sharp all had 23 or 24 second pit stops. And Christian Saruta has sat right back into this pack ahead of Christopher Smith and Guy Edwards. But there is a big gap now of 2.3 seconds from Dominic Brennan back in front of him to Simon Povey. So there has been a split in this group. Yeah, if I was Simon, what I'd try and do is see if you can back off, maybe give a second to the car in front, mm. just so you stay in the slipstream, and see if maybe you can help bridge the gap to your teammate in behind. That's what I remember trying to do a few times with uh, teammates in the past in these sorts of races, because having a teammate with you is much more precious than bringing in a chasing pack, because at least then you've got someone to help work with you. and. I guess you have the confidence then to push and try and gain those positions. I right, thought of it. I say that's very pivotal, and this could be a Ooh. crucial moment of the race for the likes of Dominic Brennan or potentially Rob Sharp, who's inside. And maybe actually, what they're doing is leapfrogging one another yeah. um, high and letting the speed in the slipstream of the Porsche carry them both along. Dominic Brennan's going to push the Porsche across the line. No, he's not actually making contact as they come through. Saruta Smith and Edwards right behind this as well with a good view of it all. We've got a battle behind with John Roberts and Byron Crawford. John will know what that Aston Martin's like. He was driving it last season in the Ukrainian digital camouflage. We've got Rob Sutherland. Oh, Ralph Mayer's had an off. I was just going to say Rob Sutherland going past Ralph Mayer, but Ralph had a bit of an off there at the bus stop. And now look at... <laughs> Look at the size of the McLaren behind the BMW there. We could barely see Lewis Ward for just a moment. But he's got Niles Core in front of him now. And really, the three leapfroggers right now are Dan McCauley, Callum Brandt, and James Holman. Because these two are still as they were before with Simon Povey now behind, aren't they? 
Yeah, and I'm going to start to think what will that mean for the cars chasing in behind. You can see the gap now, very evident between Simon Povey and Rob Sharp. And I think this is going to be crucial. You can see that Simon Povey is dropping back, isn't he, to try and mm -hmm. help bridge that gap. But it's not enough. It's 8.3 tenths between Simon Povey and Lewis Ward. But again, it's not getting any closer. That gap is still around about three seconds. And there's no real way for them to close up. I'm just looking in the Discord. I think Paul Goffin typed it when he was in the pits. Or is Paul Goffin out of the race? No, Paul Goffin is still going. Ah, yeah, he had the damage before, didn't he? He's apologised to Kim Such and Heinz Mayer for contact. He said he thought there was enough room, so clearly there was a little extra incident before that we didn't quite see. But while he was in the pit lane, he did type a message to them in Discord apologising. And that's what I mean, you know, even partway through a race, if drivers are having something repaired or have had an issue, they'll apologise to each other instantly as soon as they get an opportunity to do so. You know, the community that we have here and the respect amongst the drivers is second to none. It's really lovely. But the racing doesn't lose anything because of that, does it, Ed? It's always fierce, intense racing. I mean, look at these guys now all over each other as this quintet makes its way out of turn one. It's just awesome. You thought they were all enemies with each other. It's great. Yeah, I think as this stint will go on, they'll resign themselves to the fact that chance of a race victory will just be getting smaller and smaller. So why not just properly have at one another and fight until the bitter end? Why not, eh? That'll give us plenty of entertainment, won't it? Just to see him going absolutely hammer and tongs at one another. They could try and work together, you know, if we see the likes of Chris and, uh, Dominic Brennan and Rob Sharp, rather, trading places with one another down the back straight, leap from one another in the slipstream. But I don't know if that's going to be the case, because you can just see that it's going to take a lot of work to cut down that gap to the cars ahead. Yeah, they're going to have to put a lot of work in, like you say, Ed. Absolutely right. It's going to be, well, it's going to be a long half hour for mm. them, that's for sure. Dominic Brennan and Rob Sharp swapping places again. They're definitely working together here, and it's lovely to see it. A very shiny, Orberis racing machine with the watch face on the top as well. There is a watch face that's downloadable from Orberis, which is a special sim racing magazine watch face for digital watches. You can just about see it on the top there. Our chopper cam doesn't do it justice, I'm afraid. But Rob's actually released a bunch of different watch faces as well for certain teams from within the Sim Racing Magazine community. And it's not been licensed for the Spontex logo, but there is a CDM Esports version of it as well, which contains the Chad Cup Media logo and branding colours. So thank you very much, Rob, for getting me involved in that. It's a wonderful thing to see. And Rob is, again, one of those guys that gives back a lot to the community. And well, he's going to give back a lot to Dominic Brennan. They smacked him in the rear. That was quite an interesting uh, push and shove situation. There's, there's more swapping going on near the front here, Ed. This is, uh, this is all very feisty all of a sudden because James Holman's gone in front of Niles Corr and now Dan McCauley and he's made contact down the inside. James Holman's gone stuff it. I'm blinking. I'm going. I'm off. <laughs> Third to first yeah. in a couple of corners. Blink and you'll miss it. James Holman in the lead. <laughs> there we go. That was a lovely move, wasn't it? Diving up the inside of Dan McCauley. Oh. And we can't really follow him because the camera will keep doing that. So we'll watch the car just behind and you can see exactly that. It's blinking in and out a bit for James Holman. But this is what you love to see. He was I was doing a few little races with him and he's got a lot of pace in him. He's got good race craft about him as well as we just saw with that cheeky little move up the inside. Wasn't blinking as much actually yesterday than he is today. So hopefully that will calm itself down as the race goes on. But nevertheless, it's helping him out a treat because you can see in those brief moments where the car vanishes, he isn't giving any slipstream to the McLaren in behind. Now, another thing to realise as well, Chaz, is that they are in different cars. Each car has strengths and weaknesses. Porsche, really strong in the infield. Out here is where it struggles. Yeah, definitely, and it's where the McLaren's got that really long six mm. gear as well, so he can use that slipstream to his advantage. Can down McCauley, great speed through the bus stop. I love watching the cars go through there. When you see the real-world footage of the Daytona 24-hour at sunset, and you see the cars bouncing their way through there. It's a sight to behold. It really is. It's a sight to behold here as well. With the sun setting here at Daytona, it's going to get prettier and prettier as the night goes on. Thanks again to the championship sponsors, of course. Oris Digital, Crockery Direct, Blind to Go, Derbyshire Holiday Homes and Midas Simulations. We love your support. It's great to have them in the championship. 
And Thomas in the chat as well saying, only Niles for Chicane on my racing. This American were joining, but I have to pretend <laughs> like I'm working at this hour. It's a real shame, buddy. Hope you're all good, though. And thank you for jumping in and enjoying Whoa. the races. No, 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 no. What was that? Paul Goffin tried to stay out of the way, but he just came to a stop. I, I've never, I, I, I've never yeah, seen I, that. I'm not sure about drivers slamming on the brakes that viciously. I uh, mean, I think somehow Calabrant's gotten away with it. It looked like the entire front end came off, but then it somehow reattached itself. Oh, there was quite a bit oh, of a glancing blow. Yeah, there was a bit was. of net code. But I tell you what, that was scary. A bit bizarre, really, by Paul. I'm sorry to say, he obviously came off a lot worse out of that, but never seen something quite like that of drivers no slamming on the anchors that severely obviously it was for a good cause to allow yeah yeah essentially sure. the leading sort of it's a quintet sextet sextet yes sextet and sextet to uh come through I didn't want to say because it sounds a bit lewd but there we go to get good thing you're not scottish or it sounds really lewd <laughs> exactly to get into the uh lead to carry on through leading rather not to have any under undue influence in there, but yeah, it's very, very strange. I think, though, if you can see Callum Brand, doesn't seem to be too hampered by that. No, it looks okay. I mean, it's got a bit of a dent and a scrape on it, I think. Maybe the headlight pushed in slightly, but yeah, it seems like he's got away with that mm. one. That was very Fortunate. odd, though. Like, like you said, I mean, normally your driver would, you know, they'd get on the brakes, they'd at least make sure that they light up the brake lights, and they gradually move over to the left, but I've never seen a car slam on and stop. I think Stay wide even through the corner. Yeah, I, th I think part of it, though, for Paul, I mean, looking back at it and assessing it, I think part of it, as Dan McCauley goes back into the race lead here, by the way, is that he was he was near the grass, and I think as he touched the grass, he was worried that the car would spin into mm. oncoming traffic, so maybe that was the reason that he slammed on. I don't know, but either way, I think, luckily, mm. Callum has got away with it there. It's a shame that Paul's race has ended like that after the accident that he had earlier as well. It's not been a good night for him i'm afraid but still it's called though very cheeky wasn't it him slotting up now into second place mm. ahead of james holman james holman i think relinquished the position to dan mccord if he can right i can slot back into second place and he said not on your life sunshine and dived up the inside to get now as they were nervous as they were for the uh start of the race obviously it was uh you score behind one apex race academy car but it was dan mccauley's teammate it was leading Lewis Ward. This is where he got the move done then. So it was out of the final corner, down towards the start finish straight. Just watch what the slipstreaming does here because Niles Core is going to all of a sudden. Oh, look at the spec map on that car. Look at the gorgeous curves oh. and edges on it. You don't really get to see it that often, but it looks absolutely gorgeous, doesn't it? The Chicane Online Racing Machine. Spec maps in iRacing basically showing what part of the car is what texture, basically, whether it's matte or shiny, metallic, glossy, whatever. And I think Holman's just going to move out of the way here and let Dan through down the inside. He is. But it's this bit where Niles Core says, oh, that's nice of you. Cheers. <laughs> BMW size gap there. Thanks very much, mate. That was super, super cheeky. Thanks for sticking with us, though. I know it was a bit of a long replay there to get to that point. But, yeah, super cheeky by Niles Core. But I'm here for it. I love it. Also, sorry, Ed, but how good does John Barnes' car look? I like Ben Gregory and Mike Horder's cars, the boosted Jericho machines. Very bright and beautiful. But this new livery on John Barnes' car, that McLaren looks evil. It's gorgeous. It does. You can see the way the purple fades towards green and then into yellow at the rear end. It looks seriously mean and really nice as well. Even for the rear end, the yellow and black goes together. It looks like mm. a very sort of angry wasp at the rear end. Yeah. I think the wasps are like I got stung by a wasp the other day. First time in my life I've ever been stung by a wasp. Oh, touch, can you believe it? Touch wood, not yet. Not yet. I've, there's a weird story. I said that literally the day before. I said oh. literally the day before. I've never been stumbled by a wasp, but there's a wasp nest right outside my window. Oh, so geez. I have to have the window open to not boil alive in this heat. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, as I went to close the curtains one night, bam, right on my finger. Oh, no. Never again. No, no. Yeah, please never again. I've uh, had a weird scenario a long, long time ago where I had a bee. Oh, hello. That's Jakob Szymanski down the inside of Heinz Mayer, getting it a little bit deep. And Heinz Mayer says, thanks, mate. After you. Never mind. Maybe not. Still side by side on the exit, actually. I was going to say I had a weird scenario a long, long time ago where I felt a little a, a prick in my foot. But 
as I picked my foot up, I hadn't been properly stung by this bee, but it was hanging out of my foot by its stinger. So I don't know what happened, but it didn't sting me, and it was the closest I've ever come to being stung. I've been bitten by spiders and all sorts, which is not nice, but yeah, I've never been stung by anything luckily, which I'm very grateful for. Still, hopefully Niles Cord doesn't get stung here by being at the front of this field. There you go, hey, <laughs> segue. Yeah, We've got Adam Dan McCauley while we were having our wasp-related monologues. Yes. Well, I'll well, tell you what, everybody. Because we love you, we'll look back. Oh, well, I think we could have expected that, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah, let's have a look. Which uh, is more of if it was around the outside or the inside in the slipstream, wasn't it? Which uh, way that move was going to be made. But there we go. Around the outside. A little bit of a fight back, wasn't there, by Dan McCauley. We'd love to see it. And speaking of Dan McCauley, actually, Chaz, have you got a... Uh, Dan McCauley injury update as he fallen off his uh, BMX again recently or is he still on the mend? Uh, he went back out on said BMX with a broken elbow and hurt his, uh, hurt his hip. <laughs> so clearly there we low. go. I knew that you wouldn't disappoint. I knew there'd be something else to add to the mix. Yes, he nailed a backflip the other day though and he's done really good with it to be fair to him. It was a re he sent a great video of it and there was uh, he's actually started an Instagram page for his BMX adventures as Dan. But there's, um, there's a fantastic profile picture for it, which is him looking very surprised because there was a wonderful video that he sent me and Simon Povey of him landing this trick that he'd been trying. And it was really, really cool, to be fair. And as he lands it, he looks at the guy that was filming it almost as if to say, I can't believe I've just done that. And, and genuinely, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, hello. That was... James Holman's car deciding to put on a fireworks display as it comes out of the left-hander onto the banking as his connection blinks in and out. That's a, a byproduct of it blinking a bit, I guess, is that the car suddenly renders in and clatters against the surface. But yeah, so Dan went back out on his bike and hurt his hip and also did a backflip while his elbow was still broken. So, you know. I just had a feeling that there was something else, you know, with Dan. You never know. He was driving great. You wouldn't believe it. But I just just knowing what he's like, I was like, ah, oh, what's he done this time? And yet, sure as anything. Basically, basically calling him an again. idiot. He is. Not that. I no, just. I, I um, am. I'm calling him an idiot. <laughs> he's very incident pro. I think. Yes. But Hopefully not tonight though. He's going well oh, in second yeah, place. Yeah. On track. He's been good as gold. Because of your connection, Ed. It sounded, that. it sounded like you said something else then. It was quite funny. But yeah, <laughs> he's uh, in second place now. We just to let me know after broadcast. <laughs> I'll type it to you in Discord because it's not broadcast. Ah, but there we go. He sits in second place. Just over 20 minutes left to go now. So. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how these second pit stops line up because there's going to be a few people, Lewis Ward and Simon Povey in particular, I think, that have saved a lot of fuel here. Same with Callum Brandt, the top three from last season, all together on circuit once again, all with a chance of winning this race. To be honest, even outside of this, I'd say a couple of the guys down there, if they've actually pulled off a master strategy that we've not paid too much attention to, Still, anyone in the top ten could win this race. Ed, you never know with this series, do you? As Saruta is in the pits actually early again. Yeah, I mean we're commentators. We don't know anything, do we? We don't pay attention to race <laughs> strategies. They usually no. come <laughs> very surprising to us right at the end. But we have been quite good for that. We did manage to catch um, what the likes of Callum Brandt was doing where he won his first race. We caught onto that fairly early, where we sort of relived the events of Hockenheim from last season and thought, you know, it's a little bit similar, maybe we'll see, it's not that long straight, it might be difficult, and then all of a sudden, right at the very end, you can see, hang on, he's going to do this. It's a real treat, but there's no real chance of that happening here tonight. All, all the drivers coming in around about the, sort of, I want to say 25 minute mark of their bins. So we might be seeing that again. Yeah, but that was relatively early, wasn't it? We saw Rob the be racing car Christian Saruta will he be again up in the mix later on when all the other cars make their pit stops he's got clear air which I guess can be a blessing but also maybe a little bit of a detraction as James Holman has a big blink out now no he's in the pits in fact, actually no he's not <laughs> he's in the pits so I'm dropping down the order and thought he's blinking but no that's pulling the trigger early for James Holman yeah it really is he's making sure that he gets out of that traffic, I guess, and sees what sort of lap times he can do. Doesn't miss his box this time, does he? No. Although, blinking in and out while he's still in the pits as well isn't going to help anybody. Niles Core continues on in the race lead, though, with under 20 minutes left to go. So we're into the final third of the race here now at Daytona in round three of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. Hope you're all enjoying the show so far, everybody. Joining us across YouTube and Facebook, 
lovely to have you with us this evening. We are no longer streaming on Twitch due to simulcasting issues, I'm afraid, but also the fact that Twitch can't handle the high bitrate which I now stream at, which is over well over double what they uh, what they allow. So when the video is live, or when the stream is live, I should say, it doesn't show anything and you only get audio, but then after about 24 hours when it processes, it actually shows the video in full quality. So. Yeah, there's no uh, no point doing it live, I'm afraid, and, and not doing it just for the sake of uploading a video to Twitch. So, still, here we are. We have a good battle going on here, which is Dominic Brennan chasing down Rob Sharp. He's got Christopher Smith and Guy Edwards still behind him. These guys have all been trying to work together, but ultimately losing the cars in front, actually. Yeah, the gap from Rob Sharp to Simon Poe is now 4.7 seconds. Yeah, they lost out in the pit stop phases, didn't they? But maybe because of the... Loss earlier on in the pit stops. Maybe they'll gain in this next round of pit stops, which might be coming up sooner than you think. Obviously, Niels Court is going to be the one that I think everyone will follow through into the pit lane. So, whenever he decides to call it the day out in the lead, all the others will follow it. Oh, never mind actually, because Dan McCauley proves me wrong almost instantly by coming into the pits himself, as does Christopher Smith. Yep, a couple of them coming in then. As the rest of the field goes through, side by side, they're across the line, actually, between Dominic Brennan and Rob Sharp, once again, having another battle at this point in the race. The headlights are on now here at Daytona, and we're going to see some beautiful lighting into the last couple of minutes of this race. I think it's worked out quite nicely so far, Ed, because it means that we're not staring into pitch black darkness, looking dead on at headlights and not knowing who's who. But right now, we've got the gorgeous orange glow of the sunset here at Daytona. We've got the drama of the cars racing with the headlights on and the fantastic lighting effects that we now have here on iRacing. And I think this is going to be a very tasty looking end to the race here. Absolutely. Nils Court could be the driver to get BMW's first ever race victory in the Sim Racer Magazine GT4 Challenge. Not once before have we seen this car race the top step and with rumours swirling around that maybe we'll be seeing the new model of BMW M4 GT4 coming to the fold and if we do I will never if look at the front of it <laughs> <laughs> you'll be looking at it from the rear end as well maybe the likes of Callum Brandt and Lewis Ward will be having to do because that's what they've been looking at so far isn't it mm. with Niels Core leading still but surely now pit stops will be the forefront of the driver's mind the likes of Dan McCauley have made pit stops Christopher Smith as well James Holman has actually come into the pits and is still ahead of Dan McCauley after that pit stop. So we'll have to watch where Niels Core will emerge. At the moment, you can see the gap now, and it's fairly sizable, actually, mm. over one and a half seconds. So this could be very pivotal. But actually, the front three carry on going. Niels Core, Lewis Ward, and Simon Povey. Callum Brandt into the pits. Yeah, Callum Brandt pitting before them. So he's getting out of the traffic, and maybe he's going to put in a fast lap and see what happens he might have had the information from James Holman that says look I've managed to put a decent lap in here mate and I've got away from Dan McCauley so sometimes in a race like this while you may have the slipstream and you may be able to save a little bit of fuel the fact that you don't have to compromise and slow down early because of a car in front of you means that you can end up putting in a faster lap so yeah there's certainly positives and negatives to running out there in the slipstream and I think these guys are playing two deposits Callum Brown back out of the pits already Wow, that seems very, very quick. But then again, he's going to be on the pit lane limiter for a while, isn't he? Not much longer, though. And, well, to be fair, James Holman and Dan McCauley are nowhere to be seen. Look at that. Callum Brandt again gains an absolute bucket load in the pits. Wow. Now, where, oh, where will Lewis Ward, Neil Scott and Simon Povey emerge? The front three, and especially the second and third cars that are... Well, championship rivals. I mean, even Neil Score, it's only days in the season. He could be able to put his mark on a championship charge as well. He's had some good performances out there and shown some great promise. Maybe this is the time where he'll start some out of charge because we saw that with, well, even with uh, Dominic Brennan, where the first few rounds he was there or thereabouts, but not really coming fully to the scene until it was the round at Sebring. I believe that was the third round of the championship where he properly showed up and started to fight for the victories. That could be something that we'll be seeing here tonight, you know, the uh, emergence, shall we say, of Niels Core. The newcomer's taken a few rounds to 
get going, but when he's got going, oof, it hasn't looked like there's a lot going to be stopping him. Well, that's it. You need to just have that momentum, not just in a race and, you know, in your overall championship. It's just getting the confidence to go from round to round and be able to push time and time again. Know you've got a strategy that works for you. you know you've got even a teammate around you that can support you in certain rounds of the series as well on tracks like this. But right now it's Callum Brand that is going to be theoretically leading the race. None of the other drivers are out of the pit lane yet. You can see Lewis Ward, the closest car to us. Niles Core, I expect to get moving about the same time, but no, Lewis Ward gets going very early, then Niles Court, then Simon Povey, Guy Edwards and Rob Sharp and some of the others will not get moving just yet. But where is Callum Brandt? There he is, round the first corner. I think the guys in front are gonna be long gone here. Lewis Ward now just coming off the pit lane speed limiter. Niles Court doing the same as well. Where is the RD Simsport Mercedes? He's gonna be behind all of these guys and Simon Povey as well. So definitely it's worked out for those guys and not Callum Brandt. So Lewis Ward with 13 minutes to go here at Daytona has a two second lead at the front of the field in the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. It's exactly what he wanted, Ed. He's pulled a blinder here. Great stuff. Really well done by Lewis Ward. He's had a great final stop there to give himself the buffer he needs. But can the McLaren hang on? We know it struggles in the late phase of the race in comparison to the Mercedes and even to an extent BMW as well. But he's got the time there in reserve. Has He's got the two-second lead to be out of slipstream range. Simon Povey's there right in the wings. Maybe him and Nils Core, even Callum Brandt as well, could work together a little bit of bump drafting here and there, and it'll be yet again those drivers fighting at the front. It was once a, well, 20 car fight that became a 14 car fight, then a 10 car fight. Now it's just down to one currently leading and extending that gap. I've been very impressed by Niles Core over this race, you know, Ed. He's, I, I was very, how, how do I say it? I was very critical of his driving at the first round of the championship. You know, there was a bit of contact here and there, and he wasn't very really pleased with the incident at the end of the race either. But understandably so, you know, he was, he was trying to prove a point in his first appearance at a championship like this, and he's been great tonight, really great. There was a moment before where he called Dan's bluff as well when he went around the outside of him into turn one. It was very brave driving. Some people would see it as a bad thing, but, you know, he knew there was no overlap there, and he took advantage of it and cut across the front of Dan to sort of send a message and say, look, I'm overtaking you now, mate, and I'm going to get away. Just, just deal with it. And he's been throwing this BMW around so, so well for Chicane Online Racing, making it look so good in the process as well. He's ahead of Simon Povey right now, who's no slouch at all. But to point out something from last season is that Lewis Ward, in round two of the season, in season two, where he won his championship, of course, this was his first victory in the championship that season, and he got maximum points there. He got pole position and won the race, and then went on to win the race after that, round three. He won four races all season, did Lewis, last season, finished on the podium in every round. But when he won races, he only did it two at a time. So... Is this going to be the start of something else? We'll have to see whether the themes carry on. Yeah, Nils Kors just about caught a little bit, taking some time out of Lewis Ward and Simon Povey's right there with him. Might be a case of bump drafting and working together in these final 10 minutes. If they do, they might be close enough. Come the end of the race, it's a mount of charge. Sadly, Callum Brandt, he hasn't had the greatest of outlaps and has actually dropped back a bit from those front three so Callum might be having just to settle for fourth place yeah and I think to be fair settling for that at the moment after winning the first two rounds of the season will not be too bad a thing to do for Callum Brandt he's got a 10 point lead at the top of the championship over Lewis Ward and at the moment in terms of where he's going to be finishing Lewis will score seven points more than him so it's not going to be a massive loss in terms of Callum's championship he'll still be in the lead of the series over Lewis and well, I don't think he'll be too upset by that. What Lewis might be upset about is if these two start working together, but I feel we may be in for a battle here. The tiny McLaren, the little hoggy, the hedgehog, the Spontex CDM Esports Scourers hedgehog against the absolute black bear that is Niles Cole's Chicane Online Racing BMW. Two very different cars, but again, two very, very good drivers at a smashing circuit with 10 minutes to go. Niles Cole did catch up and went just beneath that two-second gap that Lewis Ward has extended. 
So maybe if Simon Pope can try not to slow down Nils too much, they'll both be in with a chance of winning this race. But as it stands, if they battle and fight and slow each other down, there's only going to be one winner here, and it will be Lewis. Yeah, Lewis has just got to keep it tidy, hasn't he? Through these final laps, he's 2.3 seconds ahead now of the duo chasing him down. So he's not got a whole lot to do. There's a battle here between the RD Sims. Well, I say battle. There's the two RD Sims Sport two cars together here on track. Guy Edwards chasing down Christopher Smith. They will not be battling with each other at all at this point. They're just going to be working together to try and catch Dominic Brennan and Rob Sharp in front of them. It's the same quartet that we had a little bit earlier. Behind this, we've got Mike Horder, Christian Saruta in 12th place. His strategy hasn't quite worked, unfortunately, in this race. He's not been in the slipstream at the right times. We've got a battle here between Jakob Schmansky and Kim Such in the Oris Racing green Porsche with its very, very shiny green wheels. And don't forget, drivers get points down to 20th. So currently, Martin Kenyon in the Aston Martin is on for championship points. But that's if he can hold off Heinz Mayer and Rob Sutherland in the final moments of the race as well, Ed. So there's battles going on that mean something all throughout the field. Yes, there are. And are we going to see a battle that means a whole deal to Simon Povey? This is once again close to the rear end of Nils Court. It doesn't take. It's a stays in third place. All the while, though, pressure is mounting on Nilsson. It's just not quite able to, again, get that gap down. It stays at two seconds as they break the beam, and he's just not quite got the pace through the corners to make up for the speed that he has in the straights. It sort of balances out all across the board, which is obviously great to see in terms of the balance of performance purposes. It does a very evening match, but... I think it just needs to be down to maybe having Simon Povey pushing him along down that back stroke just to see what they can do to work together. Yeah, the BMW's definitely got the legs on its own in a straight line, but even with that long six gear of the McLaren in the slipstream, it could certainly add a few more horsepower, to say the least, to a combined hmm. effort between these two cars. I mean, the gap has come down technically to Lewis Ward. It was 2.3 seconds before, now down to 2.1, but that's not going to be enough to get them ahead before the end. Martin Kenyon needs to make sure he stays ahead of this before the end. He'll love the fact that Rob Sutherland and the car behind of Heinz Mayer are now fighting with each other because that's going to slow them pair down as Rob's got in very hot into the international horseshoe. Managed to get it all collected. It looks a lot worse on that initial camera angle, actually, so hats off to Rob for getting it stopped so well. Behind them even as well is Andrew Shepard in the SRM Racing Team B car. So he's ready to pick up some of the pieces if this goes to pot. There's every chance that it will as Rob's actually gone down the inside of Martin into the second hairpin. Martin went way wide on the way in. Cuts back across the apex. So still battles Guess what, for Chaz, final well. places. Go on. If Andrew Shepard makes this place, look where Heinz and Ralph will be. Oh, for God's sake. Yet again. He better not. He better hold place. <laughs> So for anyone that doesn't know, there's a joke that Heinz Mayer and Ralph Mayer, the two brothers, always qualify and finish together on the circuit. They didn't qualify together this time round, but obviously if Andrew Shepard makes a place and Mark Johnson doesn't make a place, they will finish line astern on the circuit once again on the timing screens. At least they're quite a while apart. And so here comes Rob Sutherland on the outside of Martin Kenyon. Very close as they go into the bus stop. There's a tiny touch and Rob's backwards. Rob's across the middle, hopefully doesn't collect any of them again. Oh, my goodness me, it's a massive hit for Heinz Mayer in the Porsche. That was a I monster the monkey of monkey paw curled to prevent Heinz Mayer and Ralph Mayer finishing together out on the circuit. That was a hefty whack, wasn't it? You could just see. Oh, just comes across, doesn't he? Yeah. Bob, Bob Sutherland, I think there's always going to be tricky oh. to fit two cars wide through there. And on the grass, while Rob is holding the brakes, there's nothing he can do to slow that car down. It's He's just a passenger. Yeah, it was that wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Spits the Aston Martin sideways. He was on the brakes, and like you say, nothing able he could do there. And bang, that is a massive, massive accident. And, I mean, it sounds silly to say with a sim, for those that might not know, but obviously I, I hope that Heinz is okay, because if you're on a direct drive wheel and you receive a hit like that out of the blue, when you're not even expecting it either, if he was expecting Rob to roll behind him or something, then it can be a big, big shock to the system and it can really hurt your wrists, your arms and your fingers as well. I mean, I know people that have broken thumbs on direct drive wheels before and it can be a painful experience. So hopefully Heinz is all right. He's got the car back to the pits. 
but he's now out of the points. Martin Kenyon holds his point scoring position as this battle carries on once again with Niles Core ahead of Simon Povey. But the gap, well, it's still 2.1 seconds ahead to reigning champion Lewis Ward. As who on earth is that? That's Andrew Marston that was parked at the side of the road there. What has happened here? Oh my! What? What? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Oh, so there's. Oh, was that wasn't retaliation from Fausto, was it? I really hope it wasn't, because obviously there was minor contact into the corner, and then, yeah, that's not on. I'm afraid, that is not on whatsoever. And then, I think Fausto drove back into the middle of the road there. What on earth was that? I mean, we shouldn't highlight these moments, but we need to see it. There's the leaders coming through. There's. Oh my goodness me. I think they were just waiting for everybody to get going, but the two of them were sat there. And then I think Andy eventually got going, but Fausto went straight back to the pits. That is not good to see, I'm afraid. That's a real, real shame. Yeah, dear. Yeah. Not at all. Not one little bit. As Simon Povey's actually throughout all of that gotten ahead of Nils core as well. So we want to see how that move was made. This is now two McLarens leading the way Lewis Ward from Simon Povey. And now that will have a little bit more of an effect on... No, it won't have an effect on the championship, actually. Maybe it will, actually, because Simon Povey will be gaining as well on Callum Brandt, championship leader, just a little bit more as well. Yeah, he's going to be a happy boy, isn't he? I think this will begin the final lap, won't it, this one? I'm just trying to do the maths in my own head, but, yeah, it's going to be... Might be close, Ooh. I think. No, I think we're going to get to the line in time. It's over... It's just under a minute a lap, isn't it? It's about one, uh, not under, one under two minutes a lap. <laughs> I was going to say, what laps are yeah, you doing? Yeah, <laughs> this will be, uh, well, I just do the oval. I just go all the way around the outside. <laughs> that's how I won last, that's how I won when I was here in season one. Ah, right. <laughs> I couldn't beat Simon Pope any other way, could I? Not with the pace he has around here, and he's been really quick as well. It's actually Nils Core in that BMW. Rapid as he is, has gotten ahead of Simon there, just all the way through. It's great to see, isn't it? These two battling together. Neil Score is certainly announcing himself as a real challenger in a big way here tonight. Yeah, he's really done a good job, hasn't he? He's been right amongst it. And it's been lovely to see the BMW up there as well. Christopher Smith has done it fantastic justice up to now. And, well, like, once again, it's just lovely to see a driver showing this car's potential. Very entertaining. But I just wonder now whether they are going to catch Lewis Ward. I mean, they've actually, with the battling that they had on the previous lap, they've opened the gap up to nearly 2.7 seconds now, Ed, so it's gone completely backwards, hasn't it? It seems to have done for the moment. Yeah, they're battling together. I think they've realised now at this late stage of the race, there's even if they were to work together, there was no real way that they could catch up to Lewis Ward, so they've decided, you know what? Let's just battle and see who can take second place out all of this. Callum Brandt would have hoped that they decided to do that a little bit earlier on so we could have caught up to them but I think as well in the case of Callum his lap times have not been great so I think maybe there has been some latent damage done to that car from the contact he suffered earlier on in this race because when I look at that car on a straight line it does drop out a lot from the likes of Lewis Ward. Yeah Lewis has just been on fire hasn't he once again tonight and this is just another great performance by him. It's just worked so, so well, hasn't it, for him? You know, he, he wasn't the one that sort of showed us a, a mad strategy that was all about fuel saving or anything in the race early on. He let a few cars go by, sure, but I don't think that's been all to blame for tonight. He's just had the right pace at the right time as Simon tries to move on Miles Core, who is now blinking and out flipping out. They're all taking turns at blinking tonight. Yeah, it's almost all the RD Simswap cars. First, it was... Uh... I think it was actually at the start, wasn't it? Um, Callum Brandt, who was blinking. And then it went to James Holman. Now, Nils Cora has uh, got the bug all of a sudden. It's passed over from RD Sim Sport into uh, Chicane Online Racing. I'm not sure what's going on there, because it's a few drivers actually having a connection issues, so it might not be something on the driver's end, but maybe on the end of the sim itself, which won't be great, but hopefully it'll hang on for a little while longer, especially in case of Lewis Ward, who doesn't have long to go at all in this race, but we'll focus on these pair for a little while longer because Simon Povey, he's in the perfect place now to try and take back second place in the slipstream. 
very close to one another. And he's going to try and force the issue. Goes side by side, is he? In towards the bus stop chicane. He would be brave. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You've got to be very, very brave indeed. And yeah, I think Niles knows that he's going to get the slipstream now around the final corner for this. So we'll keep our eye on it for just a moment. Oh, look at the run. Yeah, he's got a great run. But is it enough, though? You want a long slingshot, don't you, when you come off the corner? So we'll see what Niles can do. Simon's going to make him go up wide, and then he's going to go down low, and then he's probably going to go up wide again. But we need to move a little bit further forward. We'll catch back up with these guys in a moment because at the front of the pack, to take his first race victory of the season, put your hands together, everybody, for reigning champion Lewis Ward, who for the second season in a row takes maximum points at Daytona in the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. And Niles Core has got second place from Simon Povey. Fantastic drive by both of them. Three different manufacturers, sorry, two manufacturers on the podium. I can't count. Callum Brandt finishes in fourth place. James Holman and Dan McCauley next up. Rob Sharp and Dominic Brennan. Great entertainment by them. And Christopher Smith and Guy Edwards complete the top ten. What a great, great race that was. We've got more battles to the line here, Ed. Teammates now going at each other as well. There we go. Two boosted cars. John Barnes trying to defend from Ben Gregory, but that boosted Jericho car has the slipstream, but it's not enough as they make it up to the line, but great little camera work there. It'd be great to see some uh, camera shots from the boosted boys after that. It's almost like they planned it. Yeah. Some nice post-race shots for the media. Here we go, Kim Such trying to chase down Jakob Schmansky. And it's through this final bit of the banking. Uh, Kim Such will really hope for that sling, sl slingshot drive. <laughs> All the way around the outside, he's going very wide, but giving plenty of space and room. And has he just got a nose ahead? Whoa. It's going to be close at the line, <laughs> nearly side by side. But I think it is just Kim Such that takes it. And hats off to both those drivers because that's their first points finish of the season as well. So very well done to those pair. Great stuff to see Martin them finally Kenyon get as well. points on the board. Yes, Martin Kenyon in 20th. That's his first points finish as well. A very, very difficult race for Martin, and he held mm. on so, so well there to get it across the line. But one of the drives of the night for me, Ed, is honestly Niles Core. Great, great stuff by Niles. Really, really loved that. And again, it's nice to see that BMW right up there at the sharp end. Yeah, definitely. I think this is the uh, race where a lot of us took up and well, stood up and paid a good attention to Nils Kaur and his racing here tonight. It has been excellent. The racecraft as well on display was well, brilliant. A few little cheeky moves up the inside, but nothing, you know, egregious or anything. It was just a great little bit of opportunism showed at moments. I mean, when he dove up the inside of James Holman, when he let through, I believe it was Dan McCauley into the lead of the race. He saw a gap and went, oh. I'm going to take that. Thank you very much. And for a great period of this race, he was the car that I think is actually probably I'm trying to rack it now. It wasn't exactly counting, but I think he probably led the most laps out of all of the drivers here tonight, or at least was certainly up amongst them. Still a second place. A very good reward for the hard work put in by the German. Yeah, great night of racing once again from the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. And look at that camera shot there. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Daytona there getting darker and darker as the night goes on. But let's have a look at your race results, shall we, for round three of the third season in the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. Lewis Ward takes the win by just over three seconds from Niles Core and Simon Povey. With Callum Brandt in fourth place, James Holman rounds out the top five. And Dan McCauley gets some good points in sixth. He's ahead of his countryman Rob Sharp as well, with Dominic Brennan, Christopher Smith and Guy Edwards rounding out the top 10. Mike Horder was the best of the rest ahead of Christian Saruta in 12th. John Burns, sorry, John Barnes, 13th with Ben Gregory next up. Blaine Sparling, 15th. John Roberts, 16th ahead of Byron Crawford. And then Kim Such. 19th place was Jakob Schmansky and Martin Kenyon finishing inside the top 20. The last three drivers there getting their first points finishes of the season. Very well done, chaps. Andrew Shepard, 21st. Mark Johnson in 22nd. Ralph Mayer next up in 23rd. Philip Hopley was one lap down. Drew Fletcher, two laps down. Heinz Mayer, three laps down. And then Fausto Pinto and Andy Marston, four laps down. We have Rob Sutherland as well out of the race. And unfortunately, after the contact earlier on, Paul Goffin. So, another great race. Another very, very great race, Ed. Plenty of entertainment there. I loved that one. Any real highlights for you in that? Any drivers that completely stood out? I mean, it goes without saying, doesn't it? Nils Court, an absolutely brilliant drive, but as well, James Holman and Callum Brandt, Ardy Simswat, making some very strong points for themselves as well. And I think this team championship is going to be so intriguing because we've had some great results 
for all of them here tonight. Simon Povey out on the po uh, on the podium. Lewis Ward as well winning the race. This is going to be just right down to the wire, I think, in the team's championship. And as well, I think it's still far too early to call a certain front runner in the championship because Lewis Ward looks like he's finally hitting his stride. Simon Povey's making good, consistent results as well. Callum Brandt had his brilliant turn of form at the start of the season as well. I think that bit of damage maybe stopped us from seeing what he was fully capable of the, at the end. It's just setting it up perfectly for, well, the next race, which is going to be in a week's time. And like you say, the race has come thick and fast and there's no real time to sit back and rest for him. Nah. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, one driver that we're going to have a chat with is the man that finished in seventh position in that race, Rob Sharp, back in the commentary box once again. Rob, great to see you, mate. That looked like a, a busy race for you guys tonight. Just a real shame that the pack at the front split up slightly in the midpoint. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was a it was a really busy race. I mean, it was just full on the whole time. You know, there's someone behind or someone in front, and the, the draft is so powerful that, you know, once you're in the toe, really, you... Um, it's, 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 you, well, once, you, once you've got someone in your tour, you just can't get away from them. Well, that's it. There's a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts to a race like this, thinking about the fuel, but also then thinking about the slipstream and who's in front of who and when as well. I mean, there was moments at the end of the race where people obviously didn't want to be the car in front coming onto the back straight and mm -hmm. even out of the bus stop. What, what goes through your mind in those situations? Because I imagine that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of cogs whirring, isn't there? Yeah, I, for me, it's just, you know, please don't cock it up, you know, <laughs> or, <laughs> come off or run wide or, you know, just get the exit right from the corner because if someone gets a run on you, it's game over. And right at the end there, you know, there was four of us together. Uh, I think we finished in the order. We, there was no overtaking in the last couple of laps, but it was very close. And it, I remember last season's Daytona when there was three of us crossing the line with yes. about a couple of thousands of seconds. So I know how it can be. So yeah, what goes through your mind is, or my mind is, is just, just try and keep it together because you got to be there to finish, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's the whole phrase in it to win it for a reason at the end of the day. And this is definitely one of those rounds of the championship where you have to be in it to win it. Um, it's the, the end of the sort of American part of the season, though. And next up, we head over to Spain. Normally here, we'd go over to the UK and then travel down through Europe. But this time, we're doing it the other way around, basically. We're sort of going into Spain, then France, then up to the UK and back down again into Italy. Mm. We go to Jerez, which is the first visit there for this championship. Now, I've heard it's a very good circuit in these cars. There's a few people that have run them. What do you make of Jerez in general? Is it a circuit that you like? Uh, well, look, I've never raced on it. Um, I only bought it, you know, when a few weeks ago when when it was announced as part of the championship, and I've only done a few laps on it. It does seem to be quite nice for the cars. I, I agree, but I haven't really done enough practice to uh, uh, to give any sort of um, opinion. Except that it's quite flowing in places, as I recall, because it's a while since I've driven, uh, you know, a few weeks since I've even done a few laps. So. I think it will be a, a good race. I think it'll be interesting. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I was quite pleased with my performance today. You know, um, seventh was uh, was better than I expected. So yeah, looking forward to Jerez. Cracking stuff. Well, us too, mate. And we hope obviously it goes well for you and look forward to seeing how you get on. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before you go this evening? Oh, just my wife for supporting me and my, my brothers and my kids as well. So yeah, just the usual team. <laughs> and you guys, of course, and the and, and Andy and just all the organisation which makes this championship so fantastic. Thank you very much, Rob. It's always a pleasure to speak to you, my friend. Thank you again for jumping in and we will see you at Jerez. Have a good week. Cheers, guys. Bye. Great stuff. Always lovely to speak to Rob and obviously he's a very, very lovely bloke and, well very very kind to speak to he just he's got a good outlook on it all yeah. uh, someone who we're very grateful to have a chat with we've not spoken to him in quite a while actually i'll leave uh, ed may with the wonderful lewis ward our race winner from tonight well done lewis for maximum points that you took here tonight with your pole position and your race victory doesn't get much better than that especially as this gets you the best momentum possible for the well week-long rush isn't it essentially from race to race for the remainder of the season yeah, I'm for sure, like, Callum is, I mean, what was the last three rounds? Last two rounds, sorry, he's got four points, so, um, not four points, but, yeah, like, this is, Daytona is not, like, one of my favourite tracks, but for some reason I have, like, really good pace on there, so, um, yeah, like, the strategy worked, pace was good, like, I didn't have any mistakes or anything, so, yeah, good round from this today. 
talk us through as well the way the race was going because you were obviously up front and then you dropped back a little bit after the first stint. What did you do to try and come back for that final stint? Um, I just fueled the car to go like full push. Like I was just hitting my numbers. Um, I knew what they were, and it's just I, I was surprised I actually got that two second gap on um, Nils, and I just had to look after that and make sure that he didn't get into that gap of draft so i mean i just pushed to the end and kept an eye out on the fuel and yeah thankfully it all worked out yeah well obviously like you say last season was where you've got your i think your first race win of last season and this is where i think you got your first race win of this season as well as that a sign for things to come do you have confidence into the next round that you can take it again um i hope so i don't know what the next round is but i mean uh, 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 we've done a few laps around there, me and Dan. Um, I mean, it's, it's a good track, it should be good for racing. Um, yeah, like the rest of the season, I'm just going to do what I did last season, just like just get podiums and not make the mistakes that like are costly. So yeah, just carry on what I'm doing. Yeah, definitely as well. A little look towards the uh, team's championship yourself and Dan McCauley getting, scoring good points. Is that another thing that you're going to be focusing on? Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I wouldn't have got par without Dan, and that's an extra point. Uh, I could, it's all going to count at the end of the season, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, keep scoring those podiums, and it'll probably be very, very close, but I wish you all the very best for the remainder of the season. Before we uh, say goodbye to you, though, mate, is there anyone you want to give a shout-out to? Um, just to Dan, like I said before, like without him, I wouldn't have uh, been on par with get points. And just to you guys for the broadcast, like, they're always great to watch back, and um, yeah. See you guys next round, I guess. No worries, mate. We'll see you there. Take care. See ya. There we go then, Ed. Our race winner, Lewis Ward, finally gets that first win on the board for this season, though. And as a reigning champion, there's obviously a lot of pressure to get that win done, isn't there? It's uh, it's a big moment for a driver. It really is, isn't it? It's so important for the momentum for the rest of the season. And momentum is something that will be absolutely nailing into people's at home's heads because... This is the start of essentially the run to the end of the season now, isn't it, Chaz, with the weekly races? Yes, absolutely. The season will now be flat out until the end of the championship. Uh, what I want to do is speak to one of the Spontex CDM eSports drivers. Jakob Schmanski joins us in the commentary box for the first time this season. Jakob, welcome to the booth. Um, a very close finish at the end there, but still your first championship points in the series. Tell us how you're feeling. Hey, guys. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I came to the championship as always expecting a single point gain. I got like I think three or two, so might as well retire now. <laughs> um, yeah, the racing with the uh, with Crockery Direct guys was very fun. I think we battled for like half a race, um, it, it, but otherwise I felt in the end very frustrated because of the track, the combination. Maybe it might have been just not enough speed difference on the straight and not enough opportunities on the in field to make a move but in the end you could still move up a bit well i say i suppose it's one of those tracks isn't it that brings out the best and worst in certain cars and when you're in a gt championship where the cars can all be so so different it always makes for an interesting uh, combination to see them all but it's nice to hear that the uh, the racing's been good for you so far this season we know we've not had you at each and in every round so far we know that the start of the season as well was difficult at mid ohio but does, does a points finish like this and and the racing that you've had with the crockery direct guys give you that confidence for the rest of the season does it make a, a big jump forward for you um, I'm not going to stop anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm not this kind of guy. <laughs> not not at all. <laughs> it's yeah. It's 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 definitely a bonus that you get a point or, or two. Um, I I'm not in the league with Lewis or Don or, or Callum. I know that I'm just driving for fun, and you know, fun is there. So there's no reason for me to stop. And um, I think it's a healthy um, point of view to have in such a league because. Not everyone, not everyone can win a race. Well, that's very, very true. And I suppose it's one of those things that because it's not always points given out to everybody just for finishing, like you get in certain series all over the uh, the world of sim racing, you know, it, it means a little bit more as a driver just to get those points over the course of a season. And that, that's obviously what we aim for. And it's nice to see that it can mean something for uh, for some of you guys. So it's nice to, to hear that. Uh, very quickly, though, we move on to Jerez next time out. Is that a circuit you enjoy? Is it a circuit you've driven much of before? Because it's quite new to iRacing still. Uh, I have yet to buy it. 
Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, so we own the same bed. <laughs> uh, but from what I saw from the um, from the videos, I saw my teammates driving there in the free. It looked like a very fun track, very technical. Uh, we're moving away from the very flowy tracks where you need to maintain your momentum to one that allows you to make s small mistake here and there. But you can still try to catch up, and you could catch up because in Daytona, if you lose a spot, you lose a train, you're dead. Yeah, and I I presume on Harris it would be much more viable to um, um, to get back to the fight even if you make a mistake or, or just spin as I like to make as I like to do, um, and no offense to Americans but yeah, Mid Ohio and Daytona are not very good tries. Sorry guys, <laughs> but I'm happy I'm happy we're going to to Europe now. Yeah, because absolutely. with the exception of a single track, the, the calendar looks very solid. <laughs> Which track would that be, Akko? Spa. <laughs> of course. No, oh man, it's a horrible track. Horrible. <laughs> well, just, horrible. Thank you very much for jumping in though, Jakob. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, yes, you guys. Um, for the, pre I presume, pretty good broadcast, as it's uh, customary. To the uh, older so. league. Pre very much to Kim and... and um, and Heinz for entertaining me for like half race and um, considering the defeat to Kim whom I lost to by 13 thousandth of a second on the finish line that was that was my fault fully my fault but yeah good race and congratulations to the winner whoever it was I think Ross Lewis yes yeah Lewis got the yes. win yes yes reigning champion wins indeed he does indeed. Well, thank you very much, Jakob. Great to speak to you, mate. Well done on your first points this season. We look forward thank to hopefully some more, and we'll speak to you again soon. Yes, thank you, guys. Great stuff, Ed. Lovely job, that by Jakob Schmanski, a good friend of yours, actually, that got into sim racing through you, actually, didn't he? Yeah, we were a part of a Armour 3 Milsim community doing sort of, sort of events and operations sort of every weekend, and then I was talking about, oh, what I do, I sort of do, I can't do these ones because I'm commentating he's like, oh what'd you commentate on and i talked all about the uh sim racing sort of thing and he seemed very interested i thought oh, you know give it a punt why not just if you've got obviously stuff spare lying around money spare that you can get the second hand wheel pick it up and give it a go and he jumped right into it didn't go for any of the uh, well i think he tried a bit of a set of course and then went straight in knew what he liked and then went right high racing it's obviously not the cheapest sim but it's definitely one of the best out there and mm. he's been part of ever since and it's been great to have him on board and to see him get quicker and quicker he really has got quicker and quicker as well it's great to see that progression from drivers when they join the sim and you know you, you see their first races and then how they progress from there i love it i really do it's very heartwarming to see so just to clarify for everybody the rest of the season is looking like a belter next time out on the 4th of july we go to funnily enough actually on the 4th of july is one of the first non-american rounds we go to Hereth on the grand prix circuit then we head up north to france into manicor then donnington park on the grand prix circuit i'm excited for that one then we've got spa francochamps so it's jacob hates as he made clear hockenheim ring on the 1st of august red bull ring after that and then we head back down obviously through belgium germany austria and we finish in italy at imola in san marino for the final round of the season it's going to be dramatic there it's been dramatic tonight great racing though and a new winner well no not a new winner but a new winner for this season of course lewis ward takes his first win of his 2023 season three campaign and it's been another great, great watch. Thank you very much, as always, to our championship sponsors who continue to support what we do. Oris Digital, Crockery Direct, Blinds to Go, Derbyshire Holiday Homes and My Simulations. Thank you to our wonderful drivers, everybody involved in the community, the viewers as well for watching and commenting in the chat, and the awesome Ed May for the commentary with me as well, Chaz Draker up here in the commentary box. That's all from us. That's all from the series for tonight. And we'll see you in a week's time at Hareth. Have a good one, everybody. Four French drivers at the French Grand Prix trying to win this on the final lap. The three wide again, Guillaume down the inside. Guillaume moves across, they're both in front of Milan Pouget. Well, before you know it, we find ourselves here in the very final race of the competition. And then they see truck racing and they think, this is crazy, you know, these are five ton machines, 1200 horsepower brake. Oh, look at that switchback. Oh, he's been up and the switch is going off. Go for the race lead. 
Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.